healthy marriages would go forth in our midst in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Good evening, good evening, good evening, yeah. good evening sir. Yeah, good evening. <laughs> How are you doing today? Great, great, great. Hope you have had a great day. Yeah, yeah. yeah we thank God. It's been oh. fantastic. Bless you. And that's been your own day as well. Fine, fine, fine. Great day, great day so far. As, as, as your wife doing too? She's fine, she's fine, she's fine. She's, she's caught up in another Good evening, everyone. Um, as we said before, tonight we'll be dealing with handling domestic violence before and in marriage. Um, I deliberately put it as before in, and in marriage so that we can address those people who in relationship must have seen some of these signs, you know, before entering marriage, you know, as well as those who are presently facing difficulties in their marriage as regards this domestic violence. And we're also going to be picking it from the angle of children, even children, you know, because children too are going to be affected one way or the other, you know. And statistics has already shown it that children are always recipient. Even no matter how um, the parents decide to, you know, package the whole situation and all that, children will still get to know. It's either it's beside their room or they are in the next house, you know, somehow, somehow, you know, they get to, and there's always repercussion and consequences. So, um, over to you, sir. Handling domestic violence before and in marriage. So you can give us your opening remarks. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, uh, domestic violence is quite common, not just common, so common that there is even legislation on it now. There's a law. Uh, there have been laws in different ways. Um, so you have uh, the Violence Against Vulnerable Persons, uh, let me look at that, uh, Act. There is a Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And this, this act deals with, you know, uh, people who are considered in the vulnerable category usually women, children and like I have had to explain in an interview in the past um, if a person is vulnerable, they are vulnerable whether they are a man or a woman All right. so yeah, uh, domestic violence is, is, is what it is and you see the boundaries of what violence is continues to be stretched because a lot of times what happens is that the law may not contemplate you know, um, a particular act as violent you know, but at the end of the day, um, when the law sees that uh, society is evolving, for instance, cyber stalking, you know, we now have laws against cyber stalking, you know. So domestic violence itself can take a shape that is both covered by this kind of law and even cyber stalking. Because, I mean, I just came out of a meeting into this life. Me, me, somebody has been... Somebody has been trying to cyber bully me for years. Me. But, I mean, I just finished giving instructions now on that matter. You know, uh, sending me unprintable things because for what, you know. And I've just been keeping quiet, but he has not gone further than he should go. Like he's been sending me, he picks every kind of, I don't know how he gets multiple numbers. He may just meet the person on the road collect their phone and send me another so i just keep getting you know all these threats for, for doing nothing you, you know so that's the kind of world in which we live where things evolve and evolve and evolve so domestic violence before uh before would be people just you know embracing relationships despite certain realities they can see mm. you know so what i would say is especially for people before um um any form of violence against you is a potential case of domestic violence ultimately any form All right so if, if somebody is verbally abusive somebody is physically abusive i mean they, see these stories are so common for example uh in the estate where i live one of our security guys have been off for like three weeks because somebody in the estate hit him and a full-blown and lost four teeth for oh. a man family and children and from my finding they were not it was not a fight he was not even he, it was not like they were involved in the fist fight or something 
they just had a disagreement and this person feels privileged enough that this one is a security man so the question i asked my wife was very simple if you can do this to a man and he will lose four mm. you know of his teeth which english is correct what do you do to your wife at home or your children mm. you must be really a really rough person so um violence can be forecasted before you get into marriage and like i said how do you forecast it any form of violence will lead to domestic violence because what is domestic violence violence that has been domesticated finished that has been brought home so this guy is not just fighting others in the street or this lady is not just abusive to others once you see any form of abuse and you continue the relationship you are the founder of that domestic violence it's your fault that there's a domestic there's a case of domestic violence don't excuse it don't pretend about it you know don't don't act like and if you are an adult you are choosing a person who is violent in any way whether emotionally or physically you know um it's not just going to be domestic violence or it's going to be domestic violence on your children exactly. and on everybody around your home so you might want to uh, look at that so singles must watch out are you violent in any way that can be undermining to you know um anybody's health anybody's behavior or anybody's well-being as it were so when you look at that uh, you get perspective on domestic violence mm. awesome 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 mm. Um, that, that that that's 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 a very beautiful opening. Um, while while um, you know doing my research and everything, um, I came to realize that at the beginning stage, there's usually what they call idealization stage, which is um, the point where that person showers the supposed partner so much love and attention and all that. So, so to a very large extent, in some cases, especially if it's um, a form of, let's say, maybe covert narcissism in that sense, uh, which are those kind of narcissists that they don't really show it. They have this very hidden kind of nature, you know, and they just begin to release their threats little by little. Now, at that idealization stage, most of the time, people don't get to um, see the original intent of that person because all the person is doing at that point in time is giving so much attention showering love buying gifts and you know there's something they call love bombing you know so more like they are just they are just loading the person you are just loading the partner you know and after that point in time because you know as a woman for instance so so i'm 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 deliberately using a, a woman for instance now because most of the cases or let me let me put it like this most of the reported cases of domestic violence are usually from women so if that's the case such partner that was showing you love and you know he has used it to cover all the whatever um um what's the word i want to use now whatever tendencies he has you know for domestic violence or for abuse he has used those love to cover it and at the end of the day you go ahead in the relationship which finally leads to marriage and then it was in the marriage you now saw the person's real color what would you have said to that person would you have still said that there's a possibility that during the relationship he still showed tendencies of abuse that's number one then number two is there a chance that the person did not show any sign before into the marriage okay um you're asking me to say some of the hardest things i've had to say in life mm. in the process of counseling we avoid telling people where they missed it mm. just to be kind mm. but nobody's in a bad marriage by mistake mm. i agree nobody all this see we can pamper people's emotion and nobody's in a bad marriage by mistake because especially when you speak to a believer mm. there are two things you must engage observation and discernment see the chance you just rushed and refused to look even road ordinary road narrow to save your life they will tell you to look like look right and look left yeah. so you have you have 
too many people who are not honest about these things. That's the truth. If we face it, see, the tendencies, and it's usually the case, you are counseling people and they are telling you the truth. I saw these things. I saw one or two. You know, if you are so shallow that somebody can use love bombing, gifts, and all of that to cover you, then you are too shallow. You deserve what you get. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. It's, it's sad to say these things, but it is what it is. You can't, you can't weep more than the bereaved or be more cuddly than the Pope. You can't. It's your, your life. Because you see, when you speak to singles, for instance, no matter how you shout, people that want to be stupid still want to be stupid. You know? How many persons, how many persons do you have joining this life right now? Go online and ask yourself how many nonsense people are following with, with vigor and strength. It's that simple. So people can wind up with problems and think that we'll lose sleep. I cannot lose sleep over your stupidity. Yeah. That's why sometimes when I speak, people think maybe I'm too harsh. I, I will be life itself is not fair. And people are very unfair to themselves. So you see, a lot of people come for counseling and they, they have no Christian history or no seriousness with God in their history. All of a sudden they are just any NSPPD looking for sudden miracle. It doesn't work that way. I'm blaming God. I don't, I don't know what I did in life. You made a stupid choice. All right? So we live in an age where I cannot excuse people. I cannot. Go on social media. I'm not saying good content don't have following at all. Good content have some following. But go and see how bad content is followed. Go and see how people follow what will destroy them and are happily following. So but when they are done with all their mess, they now turn to us, Messiahs, to come and clean up the mess of their choices. You know? Some people send you messages, they don't want you to sleep. Night and day, come and answer. I can't answer you. I have, I have to sleep. All right? So it's so important. And Helen says you should save this life. It's so important. Thank you, Helen. So oh, much. You know? uh, it's so important for us to put it out there. So that, number one, singles we know when you end is going to be your choice. And how is it going to be your choice? Number one, you will choose the person on the assumption of what you believe makes them good. Number two, you will have the responsibility to observe. What's observation? What your eye can see. Then number three, you have the opportunity to discern what your spirit can see. All right? If your eyes miss it, your spirit should not. You know? So, I am sorry. Whatever marriage you enter is your fault. So for most people, you need to start there so that they even realize first of all, don't put this blame on God. Don't put this blame on anything. Realize that you chose this marriage. That's where the solution begins. Because some people are so impatient with the solution. Because the solution will take time. It will take yeah. prayer. It will take patience. It will take a lot. It's not going to change over time. You, he never slapped you, but he slapped the security man. He never spoke to you anyhow, but everybody that works under his office are afraid of him. You know, his literal terror. It takes a... Let me tell you the truth. God does not intend for stupid singles to get married. God intended yes. for single people to shine their eyes. So it's not anybody's fault or God's fault if you make a bad choice. I can only see it. And there are many people are about to be in that place with. I can only see it. As a kind-hearted child of God, console you, pray with you, do a restoration with you, keep you alive. If it's prayer, you will pray. That prayer you didn't pray, you will pray it now. Do you get what I mean? So it's, it, takes, it takes a foolish person not to observe. I mean, it's, I, I, it's, I, I, I. I actually, I actually agree with you on this um, because the signs are, are always there. I will tell yeah. them every time. The signs are always there. Yeah. Um, the book titled Attracting and Retaining the Right Man Made Easy. Do you know that some people, despite the fact that they are materials, they choose not to get those materials. Like, mm -hmm. just as they have said, they choose not to get those materials. And they know that these materials are things that they will need. And this brings me to cases of, like, say, premarital counseling. You know, some people know that 
this proprietor can't sell anything is important i had a i had the uh, somebody reached out i think a while ago and they were asking so they were they were making findings from us about our proprietor counseling services and all that so after a while and i asked okay how about your church is it that your church does not not run premarital counseling or your your deep church he said eh, no not necessarily that they need an external an external i said okay that's fine so by the time we told them everything and all that do you know that till now we still not heard from that couple but, <laughs> no but if it, behavior. exactly but if it's photography they will pay if it's all they will pay and the funniest thing is that all these things their prices are like times 10 of the parental counseling that will sustain the marriage the wedding that is just for one day is not for you it's for other people because they will be the ones to come and chop the rice you will be the one to go and take the loan to go and service all these people that are not hungry in their houses you know and all these things and at the end of the day you now come and complain that oh i never knew i'm so sorry or whatever oh is 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 this marriage is tough this marriage is hard as you said which i agree to you are the cause of whatever has happened to you and i'll use this opportunity to um mention a 50 percent discount that we're doing at the moment throughout the month of october for our services and our materials so if you need any of them just go to love and emotions of um on our link in bio you see that the link is there just go any of our products and services 50 percent discount just for this month of october as we have said the ball is in your court if you're in a relationship at this time and you need help reach out if you are even in a marriage at this time and you need help reach out marital counseling infidelity recovery um individual counseling couple counseling every form of counseling reach out and we will be able to help you as we said it's only for this month of october after october we're going back to the original price at this point in time sir um i want you to um mention some of the books you have and some of the services you render for those who are following okay yes. so um we have a couple of books uh on seller and um, amazon nine of them are you sure you want me to start listing nine books now? <laughs> no, you can just tell where to get it, how to get it, yes. All right. Um, seller and um, seller.co. Seller is an ebook platform. Amazon has both ebooks and print copies. Um, so you have, um, you have, Will You Marry Me? I mean, straightforward, simple book. Um, Knowing God's Will for Marriage, uh, particularly within the context of singles. Um, Hobby and Wifey Check these questions you must answer before you say i do uh, help i'm in love and a host of others um seller and um, amazon are the platforms we are on right now so yeah then for for classes we, we run two schools school of marriage for the married school of premarital class for the singles um premarital class is bi-monthly school of marriage is, is a year thing actually because we figure that people you would like to get counseling that they won't use. So we have exactly. we have couples signed up that we are mentoring as it were. So we meet monthly. Like this month's meeting is this weekend. So we meet monthly online. We have people from all over the world, Canada, US, UK, um, African countries, everywhere. So we meet monthly and you know, so we have twelve meetings for the year, one signed up into the class. You know, so when people sign up later on they get recordings to the previous months for the months we record because the way school of marriage is is quite intense there are months we don't record because we want it vulnerable it's on zoom we meet mm -hmm. uh we want it back and open so yeah basically, lovely. basically lovely lovely so if you're on this call you are hearing this he has mentioned the books um, they have and he has mentioned the services they render if you want to help yourself so that we don't come back and say, oh, I wish I had known. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. If you don't want that to be your story, please take advantage of all these books and materials and services. There was something you said while you were talking just now that you noticed that um, some people just take some of these counseling services that they don't need, you know, and you're giving them for free. Unfortunately, you're giving them for free 
and, and this is the reason why we tell people that if you don't pay you don't pay attention that's the truth if you don't pay you don't pay attention some of some of these ig lives and free ig lives that we do you know we don't do them because we are jobless no we do them because we want to impact and at the end of the day you discover that the person you're even trying to help is really not ready to be helped you know so so, so you get them to that point where get this material with your money maybe at that point in time you'll be able to reason well and you'll be able to think that okay since i paid for this thing i will pay attention to the value i'm getting from this thing so please also if you're not following um love and emotions up and relationship and marriages on instagram please do that now um as well on youtube yes i i know i know relationship and marriages is on youtube uh love and emotions up to is on youtube we have loads of materials there that will bless you and i know relationship and marriages too you have loads of materials i see them mm. popping up every time every time i saw one recently um the one where you people were powdering your face and i'm like wow this must be fun <laughs> you know so 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 guys um there are loads there are loads there are loads of resources out there please take advantage of them now I have a question which I want us to pay attention to. Um, you've already mentioned the characteristics of potential abusers um, that will see things like looking down on other people. And, and let, me, let me put it out there that even if this person does not look down on you in your relationship phase, you know, in your honeymoon phase, you know, because the person wants to get, get your allegiance, once the person is begin to look down on junior people around him or her you know um the the uh the janitor the gate man all those people once the person begins to look down on all these people that is already a signal to you that you must pay attention to don't let it slide don't forget what he said discernment observation there's you cannot do relationship and marriage right without observation i'm telling you you cannot choose right without observation you cannot choose right without discernment this is why you need the spirit of god to help you this is the role of the holy ghost and this is why i tell people every time it is easier for a believer to marry right than an unbeliever because we have what an unbeliever does not have which is the holy spirit the spirit of truth discernment even when you want to get it wrong the holy spirit will nudge you and tell you and another thing that i need to mention again is having the right circle having the right circle having people that you can always bounce things off through you know like ah i'm seeing this person oh please help me observe this person what, what do you think you know some somebody that's gone ahead of you like a mentor a role model you know people like that a counselor please it, it's not just for fairity please yeah. it's very important now mm -hmm um in cases of domestic violence where where domestic violence has already been existing what are the steps that the victim can take at that point okay uh, when it comes this matter is a very complex matter mm. you see complex because you you want to see the context of the society as a Society, forget the law I just mentioned. Our society is very, very poor when it comes to the framework. You see, so the answer I will give somebody in the US will be different from the answer I will give a person in Nigeria. I agree. Um, the answer I will give somebody in the Western world generally, where there's a system, you know, um, ready to deal with these matters will be different from the answer of a person in nigeria is it's, it's that sad you see um because the legal framework for dealing with it is very poor here in nigeria okay so um for the context of nigeria you might want to first of all ask who does your partner defer to all right who does your partner defer to and not just who does your partner defer to who does your partner defer to that have the right, right perspective to life mm. a pastor's wife pastor's wife not just another person husband is founder of their ministry mm. this guy has been abusing her emotionally in every way and shape 
ev in every way. The only person, like I am saying, that she could go to is the person he submits to a ministry. And the man's conclusion is that she's overreacting. He doesn't listen to father, mother, brother, sister. He definitely cannot listen to her own family. And he is mentor and pastor in another church whom he submits to. Simply sees it that she's overreacting. One of the times I was speaking to her, she had left a message for the man for a couple of days. The man had not even replied. I guess the man has gotten tired of her. All right? So, so, I mean, I don't want to go into describing how abusive I perceive the situation to be. She's not even in Abuja where I live. How handicapped am I for this one person who, who I'm even doing my best to respond to as a ministry I mean, these are free counseling lines. What do I do? I leave Abuja and go and arrest him. To which police? <laughs> the direction we are talking about, if you can't solve it, you see, as a believer and a minister, I will tell you there are two layers to it. There is a layer where it can be solved as a family matter. Because we are not quick to throw people at the state system. But there's a point that even the state or the law does not permit you to keep it as a family matter. For instance, if somebody shot somebody dead in a house, no matter the, whether they are cousins or friends or brothers, the law doesn't understand that relationship. That's a crime. Or well, there are points where certain aspects of domestic violence crosses is uh, being a civil matter to a pure criminal case. Like the example I just gave, you know, if you batter a person, beat them, it's not, it's not family matter. That's the honest truth. You injure a person, it's not, you assault a person, let me use the language of the law. That is, that is not purely speaking a family matter. Of course, out of the desire to make things work, the desire to be careful, not to escalate every matter, you might treat some things, you know, still at the level of family and church. But that does not mean that the law cannot sw uh, swing in on you. So in some cases, unfortunately, I must say, in this part of the world, even when it becomes escalatable, mm. because you see, the covenant of life is stronger than the covenant of marriage. Yeah. You must be alive to be married. Yeah. All right? But like in this case, the honest truth is, I am... I got to a point where I was concerned. What else do I advise this woman to do? You know, because I perceived at that point um, her case was escalated. All right? But, you see, um, some people do not even act like you should give them any advice in that direction. <laughs> so some people don't even act that. So you will be seen like Satan to some people. Of they just want you to somehow make a magic. I cannot work exactly. that magic. I'm not a magician. I can't change him. Only God can. I need to take, you know, God and the process of engaging the power of God, the will of God, uh, to touch their will and to see if their will agrees with the nudgings of the spirit. So maybe for God's sake, this is a pastor. This guy is so bold, so confident. So if I he mocks at her like uh, Sorry. that I seen that um, he knows the number of girls interested to marry him before he like married her. And I mean, even if she leaves, like he's the popular one, his life is moving. He will have a lineup of people better than her ready to marry him. I mean, he don't want to even get into the, the gist of the story, you see. So I would say, and to the single, using this to train in an advice, don't marry a person doesn't have established authorities in their life. Not yeah. just establish not just established authorities. Um who have a spirit that can be led. Because some people may show you established authorities and once they are on their own, you know. So you need to see the example of authority in their life. I need to see, you know, that spirit in them that they are not just temporarily submitting. But they have the, you know, the, the, the spirit 
that understand that life works in structure. So unfortunately, um, you might not be able to do a lot because at the point of escalating it in Nigeria, if you go to the police, they will use money and solve your problem or use influence one one call and solve your problem and you're out which is sad you know one call is enough you're out just one call uh they will even sit down and start advising you now when a police officer beats his wife how do you want to come and report a domestic violence case so what should the person do somebody that's already beating his own wife or you sit with some people and you talk, tell them about verbal abuse and they can't relate because yeah. they take, no they take, they are also verbally abused. On. If a, an average Nigerian police station is a verbal abuse center, mm. so you want to go there and say the way your husband speaks to you mm. is paining you. Mm. They just sit and have a good laugh. <laughs> wow. Wow. So the challenges are there. So at the end of the day, most times we counsel people to meet up with family, which is difficult because just like I said, is he your elder brother? Who is struggling with his own marriage or your cousin who beat his wife or your mother who endured your father's beating who are you running to actually is the question who are you running to so at the end of the day in this part of the world though god mm, to help you to just marry right first mm, mm, god should just help you to marry right and god should just help you and your spouse to have sense uh, the systems are not them. and let wow. me just add, a lot of times you run into people like me who have little or no authority in your situation your husband does not know me or your wife does not know me have never submitted to me mm. will never submit to me who am i some will even call me and say i should please can i call their husband they know that i say under what arrangement like who am i how do i do where do I explain from that? Oh, my name is Uchulu Kutepa. I'm a minister of the gospel. Your wife called me that I've her. Come here. Where do I start from? John So it's it's in fact, as we were speaking, as we were speaking, I, I remember a particular client I had. Um so so when she was in Nigeria, her husband used to maltreat her, you know, beat her, you know. All, all these domestic violence things she does it to her when she was in nigeria she now traveled <laughs> she used this man i to see him where mm. an incident happened that he now raised his hand on her in the country where she is he was, wow. he was because because normally normally she would not report him but her sister now, now became aware of the situation the sister too was outside Nigeria, was aware of the situation and decided to tell her that, okay, go to the hospital because she sustained injury due to whatever happened, the abuse her husband rendered on her. They went to the hospital. From the hospital, she wrote, um, um, because they questioned her, what happened and all that. She narrated the whole thing. They had to lock the husband up. Mm. The husband was, was locked up for, he was, was under custody for going to a year yeah after wow. that so 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 the husband was saying something like oh he wants them to come back to nigeria and all that and all that by the time i interface with the wife the wife said <laughs> he said she doesn't trust to go back to that nigeria because there's no there's no system that would you know protect her like they protected her when what happened happened in the country she is you know I just decided not to mention the country, you know, but 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 it's quite sad, honestly. Honestly, in fact, one of the questions I wrote was, what's the cost implication of reporting to the police or authorities? That, and I wrote, do they really take them serious? And you just answer that question. I I I I, I sympathize with your, with your question. Not even the people involved. My God, I'm, a, I'm yeah, an average. An average case you report to the police in Nigeria and tell you, let police people come and see this video. I'm ready for them. Wow. An average case you, a petition you take to the police, if they are going to see it through, if you don't spend, let's assume you don't spend 200,000 mm. 
you spend normal because the Nigerian police no that this is cheap. I'm telling you. The Nigerian police need to be mobilized to do everything they do. There's no foil in their car, there's no ink in their pen, there's no paper to print. Mm -hmm. Every move to arrest the person, you will mobilize, you will pay, you will the police is funded by your petition. So when the president wants to petition the police, they want to track a number, you will pay for the track. Whether the government has the equipment or not, you will yeah. pay for everything. So you see, when people look at Nigerians and see that they cannot, Nigerians cannot take steps, it's because you first of all have a problem. I'll give you an example, very straight example. We were robbed when we were in Benue State um, 11 years ago. Is it 11? 2012, 12 years ago. We were robbed. Armed robbers came to my house. Mm. Gunpoint. Mm. Like, you know, uh, took my car. I had that car for just six months. Right? Long story short, so it was in Benue. Um, we went to the police. Now, how do you extort a man who was robbed last night? Mm. I was petitioning and funding the petition. Wow. I was the one robbed. I am the one robbed. I am spending money. You just believe I have money to spend. All right. So, so we left Benue. We were even preparing to move to Abuja at the time. So we moved to Abuja. I did my little investigation. Um, one of the phones stolen back in the day of BlackBerry. I began to chat the phone. I used a new profile, put a girl's picture. I was acting like a girl. So a boy chatted with me. Apparently, they are taking the phone to somebody to unlock, and the boy was using it. So I, I got SARS. I know Nigerians don't have good memory of SARS, but they have their use. So mm -hmm. I, I reported to SARS in Abuja. Apparently, these boys would steal from, from different states, take the cars, especially cars that are clean, across the border, mm -hmm. and sell it back, back to Kotonou, and wash the car and bring it back in a new identity. I act of the three boys that came that night, we got to through this system. But I spent every dime. Now I'm going somewhere with this story. The Nigeria, you know, where you have to fund everything. Apparently, the police in Benue had a system within with these armed robbers. How do I know? We had two of them in custody in Abuja. They were asking me for money or from SARS on how to go and pick up an allergy in Bauchi that they deliver the car to cars to who sell them across the border who were still in that negotiation of how much when they were set out for the trip when Benway police came on their own accord that the case is a Benway case and took over the case from Abuja took the boys away I am the petitioner. Ordinarily, that should have been my bill. Yeah. Who got so interested? Who became so interested to fund a trip from Benue State to Abuja to take over the suspect wow. in the name of the matter being a Benue matter? That was where my spending stopped. As far back as 2012, as at this time I had spent over 300,000 now or about wow. on the police. So it was a complete waste. I lost my car and other things they took from the house phones and stuff. And I also spent. For context, as of 2012, a pound to a naira should have been around 150. So that was spending, let's say, around 150 pounds or about. For context, in today's money in naira, that is almost 3 million naira following exchange rate, what I spent then. If, if you put it into this money, that's like spending three million. And I got nothing back. I only got, I only got move on, forget it. Yup. So, 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 so if I get you right now, so if I get you right, if there's a case of domestic violence right now in this country, Nigeria, are we saying that there's no justice for them? There is justice. So go to people like Napti. That one is even corrupt because I'm facing, I'm doing a case for somebody in Napti. The person is just setting somebody else up. 
and Naptip is for I must say that one. But there, are, see, there are some institutions other than the police that might, uh, or you go to FIDA. FIDA is Federation of International Something Something Lawyers. It's women lawyers, so they answer female cases a lot. So, you know, you have to use those soft points of landing. So FIDA may be the one to go to the police and pursue your case, and then there's social welfare. Social welfare does not have the capacities of police. Mm. Everything. Is they will just call both parties, try to mediate, try to find a way. You know, they don't have that force, you know. To uh, uh, <laughs> so, or if you have some money, rather than waste on police, you get a lawyer, they go to the family court in Abuja, if you're in Abuja, for example, and press in some civil aspects of your case. But you see, all that, all that believe that there's one mezzanic police station that can help you. The policeman has not eaten good food. He's still looking for money to eat food. You are telling me the husband shouted at you. He shouted what? He cannot understand what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? You see, I, yeah, I cannot lie to you. You are making me talk about Nigeria. You are just suffering yourself because I will depress you. And <laughs> I, the, system, the system we face can make a man, you know, give up. I'm telling you, mm, it's... Uh, it or is it let me see just wait right. this one is not go come let me give you live update in case so my firm my firm participated in three different courts today mm. uh let me give you update from our court reporting of today of the three cases now you have made me talk judiciary small of the three <laughs> cases we have working today in my office none went on on the merit none so if you have say sue somebody, so case number one, uh, John, the court did not sit because my Lord went for a seminar this morning. Now you didn't tell us before court, to, somebody went to court to realize the judge went for a seminar. Right. And this is, a, this is a high court, federal high court. This is not a norm, this is not just magistrate. The case has been adjourned off record to 23rd January 2025. Oh, hold on now. Don't worry. Case number two. Another lawyer reporting to me. The court did not sit. The matter has been adjourned off record to 11 December 2024. This is a short adjournment. This is a short adjournment. The Supreme Court gave me an 18 month adjournment. In fact, in fact, when I heard all these two months, three months, I'm like, wow, that's that's fair, that's and fair. The date, With what we the did, eighteen months adjournment fell on a date that the court could not sit. Now, eighteen months was two years ago. We still have not been heard on that matter at the apex court in Nigeria. So, what are we talking about? Third case. Don't worry. Just <laughs> if you want me to depress you in Nigeria, I'll help you. Uh, <laughs> The last one was adjourned to November 12th and 9th December, two dates given for that one case. Then the final one, 18th November. This 18th November is to just come and report settlement. Hmm. So, all right. Wow. So, 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 so I need just, just get right. it right. Just get it right. If not, you'll be getting pray about it in counseling just get you right <laughs> guys see um at this point i have to say this if you're on this call hmm, and you are still single you don't know what god has done for you are you all listening to me be you a male or a female mm -hmm. and you're still on this call and you are still single you don't know what god has done for you you see when they say single period is the time for preparation if you don't understand the meaning I believe that what you have heard so far will help you to have an idea to what it is. I'm hearing some people say, yes, sir. Okay, so thank you that you have heard that. Please pay attention to who you marry. <laughs> Hope you are hearing what we are saying. You can hear it from both a counselor, a Christian, a lawyer. He has, he has given you his own personal experiences of what has happened to him in this country. Maybe if you go out of the shores of this country, maybe your story might be different. I don't know. But to help yourself, save yourself stress, please get it right. And how do you get it right? Get the right materials. Get the right 
knowledge get the right information pay attention to i think get close to god hold god like this get close to him because it is through god you can descend right you know even after you your flesh has told you that this is what you should do mm -mm. the spirit of god is going to nudge you in the right direction so please i want to beg you and i will use this opportunity again to talk about the 50 percent discounts that we're doing for our products and services for this month of october so you've been saying oh uh, god help me god help me god help me this is an opportunity that has come to you please take advantage of it if you need any of our services or product just go to love and emotions or on our um, link in bio, click on the link in bio, you get all the services and product there for 50% discount. It ends on the 31st of October. Please, I don't want to hear, uh, please, I'm sorry, I came late, something, something, something. You have heard everything. Ah, in fact, it, it, it's more like, I, I, I know I've been hearing some of these things, but, you know, it, it's becoming more real. In fact, I, I, I heard of a particular story, and honestly, a lot of people, People are traumatized mm -hmm. a lot of people are traumatized honestly honestly uh, people i beg you get it right i beg i beg <laughs> i beg just get it right because there, there, there are lots of this matter now just made me remember another client too that that one too is married and it's it's just been tough all the way the husband just looks as if he's a coconutted. In fact, it's not like looks like he's will not listen to anybody. And singles here again, don't marry somebody who does not have anybody he actively submits to. Somebody that when they say, come here today, the person will say, yes, sir. Hmm. Let me ask this one more question before we go. Because looks like I'm already filled. <laughs> Please, all of you, please drop in the comment section. Has it been for you so far? Please drop in the comment section. I want to see. Drop in the comment section. Has it been for you so far? I've been hearing, I've been hearing a lot with my ears in this place. Okay, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you. <laughs> somebody say really, thank you, Father. <laughs> ah. so, so somebody say when you marry wrong, uh, it's like you've been sentenced to life imprisonment. Oh yes, oh yes. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So, 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 let me cap it up with this question. Let me cap it with this question. We've been talking about um, the abuse, the abused. So, 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 let's talk about the abuser now, as well as the children of the abuser. So, the abuser. Let, let, let's assume a, a situation where the abuser now wants help for some reason. The person has come to realize because some of those abusers too they suffer from mental breakdown suffer from anxiety because honestly the propeller of abuse too is under duress the only thing that is only the abused that is suffering no even the abuser too is suffering because you need extra energy to to download all these things you need to be bitter and it's the bitterness that you have that you are expending on somebody else you know so so let's assume that there's a as an abuser that wants to um get better or wants to get loose from these issues what can the person do that's question one question two the children that have been subjected to abuse as well you know maybe for some reason they were there when the father was molesting mother you know um domestic abuse on the mother every time and even if the child himself was molested him or herself was molested by even the parents because there are cases to where the parents to molest uh, their children so those two cases what would be the way out for those two cases okay first things first um to the one abusing the moment the person realizes that they are doing wrong <laughs> then a miracle is around the corner yeah. i don't want to be so civilized that i will not say the truth there is none of these cases that a demon is not involved. Whether you call it child trauma, you call it uh, mental health crisis, or mild madness, anything you want to call it. I'm too, I'm too born again to give it just a scientific name and go to bed. Of course, demonic possessions can now create patterns 
Donc, on a fait, a fait des, des, des psychosis, qu'on a psychology, or whatever. So, there are two dimensions to getting help. The person must receive some spiritual help, what's called deliverance. Like, and uh, I'm not necessarily talking about something being dramatic, you know, go to a, do 50 days, 100 days. Mm -mm. You need to ask a spirit to live. There's a spirit. Like I was giving a personal example before now. Somebody has been sending me unprintable things for years. I've decided to ignore him. But I just come to my attention now that he's turned into a petition to my church. Oh, oh. He is laughing, completely laughing. I've been contacted. They don't even need a response from me because his message itself suggests that he's mad. So what I did was, you are not asking for a response from me. The people he is after, which because of my practice has made it on him unable to do what he intended to do, is what is hurting him. That's my own crime. Say I'm obstructing justice. Mm. He wants to go and do people without them being defended. And the people are innocent. He's actually mentally touched. Now, what I did was, I know you're not asking me for a, any response, but I'm, for formality, I will. You know what I did? I screenshot messages I had blocked. I gathered them just before I entered this slide. I forwarded to to the system. The first response I got is that this guy is under a demonic influence. You can't stand to read the messages he's sending to me. It takes a person who is not who does not know how to see to, to not see that this this person, you are not normal. I'm talking of messages without my response by any means. So that person needs deliverance. They need to have hands laid on them by a person with the spirit of God and cast out a devil then they need to sit with a profession now this professional too please should be a Christian one I'm not saying people are not they are lawyers are not Christian they can do your work well as a lawyer but when it comes to issues of the soul forget it oh, that's why some psychologists and therapists are just making you repeat customer they yes. use, uh, use one or two strategies on you next year they call it relapse you are back I agree. The earth is not equipped to handle demonic problems. They can only try. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, meet a professional that can guide you through changing your patterns. But if you reaccommodate that spirit, you would even shock your professional. Because one day, one day your professional will talk to you and you beat up the professional. <laughs> the spirit is All right. So um, it's important. It's important to get help in those two ways. And even the Bible supports what I'm saying. The Bible says you know the truth and the truth shall set you free. All right? So it's important you know you know that. Then for, for people who have been victims, check yourself into some help. Like I'm saying, you need the same kind of help an abuser you know, needs. Yeah. Because you have been exposed to rubbish. Your soul has captured some information that are wrong. All right? And it's there is also a place of self-deliverance. And where is that place? There are right teachings everywhere. Go and find them. You Go and know. find them. By the time you listen to people like my Moro teach you, your brain will reset. Because eventually these devils are empowered by information. Yeah. Wrong information will lodge into you. Replace the information. All right? So get, get, get yourself some help. Of course, pray about it. Refuse some spirits from following you. Yeah. Then replace the information that makes them follow you. Those two key things. So radically pick up materials. Learn marriage. I'm not. I mean, my parents are separated when I was eight, divorced I was ten. I've had four mothers, like my mom and three others. So it's not. It's not. All of us came from somewhere. Yeah. Our stories are not. Yeah. Well, your are dead. Your hand. I stop going around making excuses. It's because of where I'm from. Because of where I'm from. Because of what I saw happen. I've not divorced my own wife and I'm not planning to. Yeah. You know. So it's important we put things in perspective. All right. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you so much for this. Um, for everyone following, I hope we have paid attention to all these things to so tackle it both spiritually and professionally. 
and I tell people all the time that people like us, what we bring to the table is far beyond counseling. <laughs> There's something that is called spirit field counseling. We bring it from the professional angle. We also bring it from the spiritual angle. So there's no way, there's no way your life will not be better. There's no way. Because as we are tackling it professionally, we are tackling it from the other angle. So far, you are submitted to it. So if you're on this call, you're not following relationship, uh, relationship and marriages yet, please follow them right now. If you're not following us at Love and Emotions, of, please follow right now. We have lots of materials on, on YouTube, um, also on Seller. If you need any of our materials, please go click on that link in bio at love and emotions or and you get loads of those materials please get information knowledge is the difference between um, an illiterate and somebody who is literate knowledge is the difference I i'm sure it is that same knowledge that made you not repeat the pattern of your father exactly that's what made that difference you know so so the fact that your your parents were some type of way that you're not proud of does not mean that you too should replicate such you know so so please take advantage of all these things and as i said before um in this month of october we are we are on a 50 percent offer for our products and services so go to love and emotions of go to our link in bio uh, click on there and get as many of those materials parental counseling every form of counseling you need as well as materials uh, and also relationship and marriages have loads of materials nine books so go to their link in bio click in it and invest in yourself i beg you invest in yourself if you have not picked anything from this ig live this evening invest in yourself and don't make a mistake of marrying wrong i know we are taking your time i want you to give us closing remarks at this point just closing remarks and end there <laughs> no, 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 Mark. Yeah. Go and watch this video. I love you. I love you. Watch, watch the video afresh. You need it. Because there are some things you've not heard. You need to hear them again. You've not heard it well. You need to hear it. And don't forget to, you need to share it to people that you know need help. You know your friends, you know family members that you know they need help. Share it to them and let it bless them. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ocholi, for this time. I really, really appreciate. I really appreciate. I really appreciate. On behalf of my wife and I, and all of us at Love and Emotions, of we really appreciate it. Um, we really appreciate your time. Your wife was so quiet tonight. I think she was very tired. She was just very tired. So it's like she just needed <laughs> she just she just needed that time out yes yes it's been a very hectic day for her so she just had to i needed her to talk before but she needed to just uh, uh, do something and attend to her son yes all right thank you so much sir. thank you so much so love and emotions of relationships uh, and marriages Love you guys. See you next month. Bye. Good night.